This morning, I just want to share this. Um, this is the, the quote that I've got in my heart. Let God's Word live big in you. Turn to somebody and say, let God's Word live big in you. Let God's Word live big in you. Amen. In Colossians 3.16, it says, Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. In other words, let the Word spoken by Christ the Messiah have its home in your heart. You want to you believe that? In your heart and in your mind. I believe that we've got to have a bit of a mind change. Let, let the Word of God dwell in your heart and in your mind. Let it dwell in there richly. Let it produce what God has intended it to produce. God has given us this Word not just to, to fill a book up, but that we might be able to live by it, that we might be able to draw from its power, draw from its strength. You know, the Bible says also in uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. One of the great problems and the battlefields that man faces is our mind. We have somebody here that stood up just a minute ago and speaks about a situation where there's six, uh, you know, 63 percent of children go to school. Only a small percentage, six percent, uh, are actually in church. To me, that just adds up that what a what a great mission field it is. A lot of people want to go over to, as she said before, to Africa and different nations, and and that's great. I'm not knocking that at, at all, but a lot of people don't go anywhere because they can't afford to go. But here's an opportunity to go somewhere and do something that will impact people's lives. But you see, while we're sitting there and we're hearing about that, I would, I'll guarantee you there's not one in this place, but there would be many people that your mind is having a war with you. See, if that's the Spirit of God, if that's the perfect will that God has for your life, if that's the, the, the starting block for you to enter into something so dynamic and so powerful, I guarantee you in your mind, the enemy, all hairy legs, will try to stop you from taking that first step. Every journey, no matter where it is, has to have that first step. And if you don't make that first step, you don't go anywhere. And, and I know that for a fact that in our mind, we start thinking, I don't want to, kids, man, you know, snotty nosed little kids. Who wants to go around them? You know, Nancy and I, many, many years ago, I, I said to God, I said, God, what do you want me to do for you? And he said to me, he said, Neil, go up and down the street and gather the children of your street. And it was only within about three or four weeks, we had 75 children in our house. And we were playing soccer and different things like that. From there, I, I went and became the children's pastor of the church. Uh, the, children's, the, the church, uh, children's church went from, I don't know how many, to almost 600 children within a very short period of time. In the midst of that, while I was doing that, God asked me, and well, the pastor asked me, would I go and plant a church on the Sunshine Coast? From there, we came up and we planted the church, which is now called Christian Outreach Centre at Wombai. And that church grew at, a, at an amazing pace. And what I'm saying is that standing there and saying, God, what do you want me to do for you? And the Spirit of God say, go up and down the street and gather the children and, uh, you know, do this and do that. And I could, might have said, oh, God, I, I want something more, you know, come on. I, I, want, to, I, I want something big, you know, I want, to, I want to go and raise the dead or I want to get people out of wheelchairs. But you see... If you don't take that first step, you see, this is a journey that you don't know. And it just happens that uh, Luke's mum's here today. And Nancy, you may not know, but Luke's mum, uh, that Luke actually took over the children's church at some time there and, and took it to another level. And it's just an amazing ministry. Today, he's pastoring in Sydney, I, I believe. Anyhow, but the thing is, if you don't take that first step, folks, and let me encourage you, if God's speaking to you today, and it may not be to, to go into, into that, but it may be something else, whatever it is that God's speaking to you about, let the Word of God dwell richly in you. 
Let, let God speak into your heart. You see, this isn't just the only word of God. God will be speaking into your thinking. That's the word of God. Let it dwell in you and let it bring uh, whatever God wants to do in your life. Let, let it come to pass. Because I want to tell you, God's got big things for us. Amen? God wants to take you on a journey that uh, will bring you joy, unspeakable and full of glory. See, I, I believe that God wants, wants to do something. And it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the re renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I don't know anybody that doesn't want to know the will of God. But you see, our mind will battle against what God wants you to do. And it's when, you, you know, whether it seems insignificant or not, start doing something for God and then God can take you somewhere. If you don't do anything, well, I don't believe God can help us really. You know, in Proverbs 3, 5, it says this. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. How many people really trust in God today? Do you, can you trust God to, not to take you up some dry gully? Can you trust God to take you into His purpose and to His plan? You, can you believe that God's going to really, really help you to achieve your goals and your purpose and your plan? It, it says there, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. This is where our mind comes in, our understanding. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path or make sm smooth your part, path. Lean not to your own understanding, but in every way acknowledge Him. Friend, if God is speaking to you, acknowledge Him. If God is talking to you about going in to do the RE classes or RI classes, whatever you call them these days, and what, what I really love is, is that there is a law. <laughs> Amen? I love that because, see, when, when we started, we, we didn't know what we were doing. We started what we called Joy Time Clubs, and uh, we knew what the law said. And the law said that school buildings belong to the state. <laughs> They didn't belong to the principal of the school who thought they owned it. And there were certain laws that said that buildings that belong to the state, uh, you can use them for different things. And one of the things you could use them for was Christian education. And I would go up to the principals of the school and I would say, Sir, we need a classroom so we can do a joy time club after school in this school. And they say, You're not doing it here. He said, Excuse me, sir, but it is written. <laughs> it is written. You see, we've got to learn some things. There's some things that are written. And we've got to stand up and oppose some things. There's some things that are written here about your life. And old hairy legs will try to say, no, you're not doing that here. Say, excuse me, sir, it's written. <laughs> it's written. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You, you, you'll be amazed at what God can do and what God will do uh, through your life if you allow him to. So I want to say this, that I believe that God has given every one of us talents. He's given us every one of us a purpose and a plan for our lives. But old hairy legs comes along and he wants to steal from you. And, and this morning, I suppose, what I'm really wanting to share is keeping what God has freely given to us. Keeping the things that God has given to us and not losing them. I see too many people that start off in a, in, in a real joy and desire and, and, a, and whatever else. And, and all of a sudden, you see their lives go downhill and, and they lose the, the gifting, they lose the joy, they lose the purpose, they lose the plan. And, and worst of all, as many people today are not even going to church. People that, that were, were inspiration to me in years gone by. People there that were so excited about the kingdom. Friend, you've got to keep and you've got to hang on. You've got to fight to hold on to what God's given to you. Do you believe that today? You've got to fight. You see, the Bible says in John 10, it says, The thief does not come except... He doesn't come to bless you. He doesn't come, he might promise you good things. He promised Eve a lot of good things, but he had a purpose and a plan to steal from her. He doesn't come for any other reason but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to steal your faith in God. He wants to steal your faith in this Word. He, he wants to kill the purpose that God has for your life. And he, he wants to, uh, uh, to kill, and he wants to destroy your destiny and your future. That's, that's the enemy's plan, but I thank God that Jesus said, but I have come. Yes. 
Everybody say, but I have come. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I often say to people, don't die until you're dead. Don't die until you're dead, friends. Come on, let's, let's live while we can live and, and let's expect God to do some things. I've come that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. See, when Jesus came, Jesus, uh, we use the word salvation, but, but the real word is sozo. And that, that word means total deliverance from all the works of the enemy. Salvation is not just throwing you a, a life raft or, a, or one of those life buoys uh, to keep you afloat in a pool of sharks. And you've got to kick the, no, total deliverance. He said, I've taken you out of the kingdom of darkness and I've translated you in the kingdom of my son. In other words, I've taken you out of something to bring you into something that is more dynamic and more powerful than you can ever imagine. But one of the things the enemy wants to keep us in no man's land, wants to keep us in this, this I don't know sort of thing. And, and if we don't step out, we'll never enter into the purposes and the plan that God has for our life. Because the enemy is a thief. Do you believe that? He's a bad devil. Amen. Bad, bad devil. In Galatians 3, 14 and 15, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. From the curse of the law. Everybody say curse. Not the law, but the curse of the law. The curse of the law. I've delivered you from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For as written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. See, long, long time ago, God cut a covenant with a man by the name of Abraham. He cut a covenant, and when he cut that covenant, he spoke to Abraham and he said, I'm going to be your father and you're going to be my son. I'm going to be your shield. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to be your God. I'm going to be everything that you ever needed. I'm going to supply all of your needs. I'm going to watch over you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to deliver you from the hands of every enemy. And this man fell so much in love with, with his father and, and with this covenant that he had with his God as he watched God move and, and do great things that even at his old age, that the promise of God, that God had given him a promise that he said, I'll give you an heir out of your own body. We know that he messed up with, with, a, with an Ishmael, but God got through to him and he, and he created an, 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 an atmosphere that this man could reach out and, and receive the promise of, of what God had said. We know there that as he got his Isaac, as he got his child a promise, that one day God said, I want you to take him up to the hill and I want you to do something there that, that might be a little bit hard but I want you to do something because it's going to open up a door for me. It's going to make a way for me to penetrate and make a, a inroads into Satan's domain that's going to smash him and going to destroy every work that he's ever tried, everything that he's ever, ever planned. I've got a plan, but please don't lean on your own understanding, but in every way acknowledge my word and follow what I'm saying. Trust in what I'm going to say to you. Friend, I want to tell you, it's not a walk in the park to trust God, if you can understand, because when He asks you to do something, it's out of your natural ability. It's something perhaps you don't want to do. It may be something there that you, you want to do, but you don't feel you can do it. And He said, I want you to take this son. I want you to take your son. And, and, and this is my sacrifice. And we know that Abraham took his son there, cut a long story short, and laid him on that altar. And he took that knife in his hand and he lifted that knife. And as he started to bring it down, God spoke to him and said, don't, stop. He said, I've provided myself a lamb and he found a lamb in the thicket. But you see, what that did was it opened up a door that God now could send His only Son to come and die on a rugged cross for you and me. Amen. You see, if Abraham hadn't have done that, you see, the law would have said, you cannot do that. The law would have said, you cannot do that. You cannot, you know, you cannot pay for that because, because, because. 
But because there was a man that did what he did and was prepared to slay his own son, to, to, to lay down the life of his son, now God had a doorway into Satan's domain and he went in there with his son, Jesus Christ. And we know that Jesus paid the ultimate price as he hung upon that cross, as he died there, as he gave his life, as he shed his blood, but he rose again triumphant or his foes and he took the keys of hell and of death and he slapped devil up the side of the head and said, listen here, boy, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise up a people. They're going to slap you up the side of the head even better than this. <laughs> but you see, God comes and He speaks to us, but if we don't take that first step, nothing happens. We don't go. If Abraham would have said, but God, that is such a hard thing. Now, we know that Abraham battled with that. We know that he struggled with that. We know he said, but this is a, a, an heir. This is my heir. This is, you said, Lord, that out of him, you're going to cause uh, that my descendants to be like the stars of the, the, the sky and the sand of the, uh, of the seashore and blah, blah, blah. But he said, if I kill him, how is this going to happen? He said, no, lean not to your own understanding, boy. Come on, trust me, trust me, trust me. Sometimes, friends, it's not easy, as I said before, but we've got to trust in the Lord and allow Him to be God because God knows the answer. Do you believe that? Christ has redeemed us. He has set us free. That the promise of Abraham, that, that, that the promise, uh, let me just read this again. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. See, there's an old covenant, but we've got a better covenant today. We've got a new covenant, amen? The blood of bulls and goats, that's what they were relying on. Abraham was relying on the blood of bulls and goats. But I thank you today that we've got a better covenant. We've got a high priest, amen, that took his, my place on the cross. He took my place. He died for you and me that we might live, hallelujah. That, let me say it again. Don't die before you're dead. Live for Jesus Christ. Come on, do whatever you can. Find something to do for Christ. Don't just be a, a pew warmer. Dead bodies stink. That's why they call them pews. <laughs> But here is, here is our high priest, his blood. And we know that when, as he as is in age for three days and for three nights and he rose again triumphant or his foes and he took his blood and he took that, our high priest took his blood and presented it before the Father and he put it on that mercy seat. That's why we can cry, Abba, Father. That's why we can cry, Jesus, Son of David, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, amen. Because the blood today is on the mercy seat, amen. Oh, I thank God for our salvation. I thank God. I thank God that He did, went all the way. I thank God that, that our high priest today, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, paid an ultimate price. And you know, He comes and He speaks into our, into our ear in a, in a still small voice. And he says, hey, come on, what will you do? What will you do? What, what can you do? Oh, go and pray for that lady. Oh, I'm too embarrassed. You know what? I'm so thankful that my Saviour the Son of God was not too embarrassed to hang naked upon a cross and pay a price for somebody like me. Amen? Don't, don't look, friend, there's one thing that there's no excuses in heaven. What have you done? What have you done? I, I believe that the blessing of Abraham a better covenant. We've got a better covenant today. But that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. There was a, in Luke 13, 16, there's a story there of a woman uh, that, that had a spirit of infirmity. And, 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 you know, they looked at this woman and, and it was, I'm sure it was a Sabbath day, but Jesus looked at this woman and says, Ought not this woman, seeing she is of the seed of Abraham, ought not, not she be healed. Friend, if we could capture that. You see, this book is a legal document. This book is a legal document. If you, if you, if you have, a, have, a, have a deed for your house and you, you've got signed, paid for in full, you've got the deed in your hand. And one day there you're, you're in your yard mowing the lawn or something like that and a couple of people walk past and they, they have a look at your beautiful lawn and they look at the lovely flowers and they say, hey, can we have a look inside? You say, okay. And if you're silly enough to, you let them in. 
Then you know, they come in, they, oh, this is a lovely house. Oh, this is our house. We're going to have this house now. You leave. You say, what? You, what, what are you saying? Leave? No, this is my, no, 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 it's ours now. You say, no, 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 I have a deed. I've got something signed. I want to tell you, friends, I have something signed with the blood of Jesus Christ that says it's no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. It says now that I'm born again. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. Praise God, I'm born again. <laughs> I'm a child of God, and that's wonderful. That is an amazing thing. But now God wants the blessing of Abraham to come upon us. He wants us to be blessed. He wants us to be the head and not the tail. He wants us to overcome, and He wants us to triumph over hell and death. But friend, I want to tell you, there's, a great, there's, there's, there's something so dynamic and so powerful waiting for every believer. There's a reservoir of, of an abundance of blessing. The blessing of Abraham should come upon us. There's an abundance of life and healing and deliverance and salvation and goodness knows what. All that salvation contains. But friend, if we don't take the first step, Friend, there's a lot of things that you and I have got to start to do. I heard a preacher one time, he was talking about somebody there that was complaining about having bad knees. And he looked at him, he said, sir, you're over 400 kilos. What do you expect? There's another person there who said, I've got a lung condition as he was opening up his second packet for the day. Friend, we've got to start changing a few things in our life, the way we do things, amen. You can't expect to be watching pornography and, having a great, and then have a great marriage. You can't be doing the things of the world and expect that, the, that then you're going to get the blessing of God. God, I believe, wants us to do, it, it says there, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, I urge you, I, 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 I cry out to you, will you please present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Come on, friend, then you may prove what is that perfect will of God for your life. You won't know until you take that step. And it may be a classroom over, in, over here. It may be doing something else. It may be doing whatever it is. But whatever God tells you to do, do it with all of your heart, with all of your might, with all of your strength, with everything that's within you. And I want to tell you, you'll find success. You'll find something there that will smash every gate, every wall. You'll come out of your shyness. You'll come out of that. Friend, I want to tell you, you may not believe it, but Nancy will testify. I was the shyest boy on the block. Come on. I was too scared to ask Nancy for a dance and she was my girlfriend. <laughs> I was too shy. I was a shy. I could not do this. I could not do that. But I want to tell you there's something there that will break God's purpose and plan for you is I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Lean not to your own understanding, but in every way acknowledge Him. I want to tell you there's things there that will blow your mind if you start taking that first step. Go and gather the children. I didn't have a clue what to do with children. I had a few of my own. <laughs> but I, 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 I thought, what do I do? I, I can't do this. And I had some Uncle Arthur tapes. And so I thought, I'll play them. But I run out of Uncle Arthur tapes. <laughs> then Uncle Neil had to come on the scene. But we got kids saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. The church grew. The <laughs> we had joy time clubs all over Brisbane. Nearly every school that I can remember had a joy time club in it. Hazel and David were there, amen. <laughs> Joy times, oh, glory to God. Six double-decker buses full of kids. We used to bring 113 or 115 kids in from Albany Creek. Come on. What are we going to do? You know, we all, how many people want revival? Well, let's start with me. <laughs> Revive me, amen. Light a fire in my heart. Light a fire in my heart. I'll finish this next week. <laughs> I've only got one page done. I've got about 10. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You love Jesus? You want, you want the best for your life? Step out. Step out. Step out. Step out for Jesus. You know, there's... Just shut your eyes for a moment. I just sense there's somebody here today and, and you've been struggling. 
And you really need to come back to Christ. You really just need to come back to Jesus. Give Him your whole heart. Give Him your whole life. Because you're chained. You know you're chained. You know you're bound. You know you're broken. And I believe the Spirit of God is not here to condemn you or to put you down. He's here to set you free. And sometimes when there's an older, we think, oh, no, I, I won't come. But it's the same as what I've been talking about. That first step is a step to, to your deliverance. That first step is a step to your freedom. Jesus, just while every head's bowed, every eye's closed. Perhaps you don't know Jesus in this house today. You want to give your life to Christ. Perhaps you know you're not right with God inside. You're not really right. It's not really right. Perhaps today you're not real sure where you stand with God. Not real sure where you stand. But I want to tell you, Jesus wants you to know that perfect will of God for your life. He wants you to know that you're saved. He wants you to know that you're delivered. He wants to help you. He wants to help you. If I'm speaking to you today, in any of those areas, would you just quickly slip up your hand? That's me today. That's me today.